Hey, all my six stream friends out there, good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. We're going to go back, way back. Well, way back, way back, meaning uh, college for me. This came out, I think it was 94, 93 or 94. Can't be 100% uh, certain, but um, live, um, Throwing Copper, that, that album right there. Fantastic album. Uh, I guess it came out when I was in college. I, I, I might have been a sophomore, maybe a junior. I don't know, maybe a senior, who knows. But it was college, it was pretty big. Um, and I've never, I don't think if, if on this channel I've done any live tune. So uh, I got a couple I'm going to be throwing out there real soon. This being one of them, Lightning Crashes. We are tuned down at half step, just so you know. So if you want to play along to the record, um, you got to tune down to E flat. And when I call out these chords, I show you these chords. I'm just for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna just call them out as you typically would would see them, how they would look. So that's an F, right? A minor, E minor, and then this is kind of a you know C suspended two. But I also I believe that bass note is in there on that sixth string. So. Sounds like it anyway. So it's going to be an F chord. A C sus 2. But again, I'm putting that bass note in there on the, the sixth string on the third fret. And then a G chord. Those are the main three chords throughout this tune. So, uh, you know, that that's, that's probably 80, 90% of the song right there. There are, it is heavy bar chord tune. So... Um, it's a good exercise to get your 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 finger and your hands all kind of in in practice with playing the bar chords. The, typically, if you haven't done bar chords a lot, your thumb will hurt as you're kind of just playing these. Just practice. I'm sure you can find out other ways to play this too. If you want to put a capo on the first fret, you could probably get away with some things. But this is how I would play it. Um, so it, it just kind of starts off like this. repeat. I think the key thing to this tune is that bit of that percussive feel you're giving it. You kind of hear yourself, the, the, the strings getting muted and kind of hit at the same time. the verse that's going to repeat over and over again um when you get to the chorus though uh, those same three chords you're going to play but you're playing them just a little bit faster now right so you're playing it, so listen to the record, basically the best thing to do, CD, record, whatever you got. Those three chords that were key for most of the song. It's going to be the F, the C sus2 with that bass note on the sixth string, and then a G chord. So pretty straightforward, I mean, for the most part. You're going to get to, I guess, I don't know what you call it, the solo, the bridge, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's going to change to an A minor. Now, for simplicity, we can do a regular E minor. Okay? So you can just do this. And that rhythm pattern is... If you want to make it a little interesting, just to give it some feel, we can do this. Same chords. We're going to keep one chord the same. I'm going to switch up the chord to a bar chord here. All right. So what am I doing different? That I'm just kind of hammering, or I should say I'm kind of pulling off and back on to that second string first fret to give me the full A minor. To this E minor seven. And I'm just, my pinky is hitting that 10th fret of the high E string. See that, so. Okay. 
Okay, so. We'll play that three times. One more. Here comes a change. Ready? Repeat it. Okay, so you're going to do that two times. So the A minor to that E minor, three times. After that third time, to the F, which is basically your turn around going back into it. We're going to do it again. And when you come out of that second time, so you're right back to the chorus, okay? That's your tune. So uh, rewind it, practice it. If you're not familiar with the band or with, with this album, I suggest you give this one a spin. There's some good tunes on there. Um, enjoy it, and I will see you on the next video. Again, if you haven't done so, like, subscribe. Uh, tons of stuff coming. I actually have a lot of things planned out uh, going into the fall. I've actually been making a list of some tunes I've been looking to do for a while, and uh, I will be working on them. So it's a little bit of everything. So uh, enjoy, subscribe. You'll know what's going on. Also, follow me on the community. Uh, I put posts up there, and I'll give you some updates on what's coming down the road, what to be ready for, and uh, we'll go from there. All right? Later. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thanks for checking the channel out. Really do appreciate it. By request, uh, we're going to do a little Black Crows, Hard to Handle. Um, easy tune as far as I think the chord structure goes. Uh, you know, you're playing, it's a lot of bar chords. So if you got to be good with your bar chords, I think, to make it happen. But it's, you know, a, a, a B for the rhythm, an F sharp in there, and then you're, you're playing with a D and an E and an A. So, um, but really cool. Make it your own. I'm going to kind of go over a few things in terms of how you can really change this up. Uh, you know, if you're playing just kind of solo acoustic, uh, I think it works really well. So again, if you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. So when you're notified, uh, a lot of things happening right now, uh, and you'll find out all about those things, you know, in, in due time. So, uh, but let's jump right into this one. Again, Black Crow's hard to handle. I think it's pretty straightforward. Some, some bar chords though, but we're going to give it a shot here and see what we can do. Okay. Um, the way the riff, that opening riff, um, is, is pretty straightforward. We're going to come in on the, on the low E to the 7th fret. That B right there. From there, we're going to go to the A string on 5 and 7. Slide to the ninth. So it's 7th fret on the E. 5th fret on the A. 7th fret on the A. To the nine. And then we're going to do a double pull off from on the A string from 7 to 5. Back to that root B. All together. Play it again. And instead of going back to that final that 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 B note again, we're going to go right into the into the riff. Or I should say the uh I guess the verse at that point. So I'm going to give you the option here on this one because there's several things you can do coming out of that riff. We can go right into the verse like everyone kind of knows how to do. But if you're doing it on solo acoustic guitar, you can kind of actually do that pre-chorus section right here. So if you want to give it a, you know, as an example. doing there is, which I'm going to show you anyway in a few minutes, is that I'm going from a D to the E, A, E, B. So you've got to know those bar chords to do this. So it's D, E, A, E, 
B. Or if you want, you go right into the verse. And the other thing I would suggest if you're doing this solo acoustic, you can give it a little bit of a bounce, I think, to this. It's, you know, where I, I think, if I remember correctly, the, you know, the actual LP version. What I'm doing there is, instead of playing the B like this, I'm kind of playing it as a, as, a, as a B5, basically. So I have my index finger on the B of the seventh fret. I'm taking my, for me, this is how I do it. I take my middle finger and I put it on the ninth fret of the A. That's a B right there. And then I use my pinky to go on and off the A, a string on the um, 11th fret. So, <clears throat> excuse me, just make that your own. Um, if you want to do it that way, or you can kind of give it, <coughs> excuse me, more of like a shuffle bounce type of feel. Um, so if you're going into the verse, you know, it'll start, you can start off like this. So I leave that up to you how you want to get that rhythm going, but it is a B in the verse, which is going to move down here to the second fret, same bar chord shape, uh, to an F sharp. So you're only on that F sharp for a little bit of time, and you're going to bring it back here to the B. After the, it's only during the first verse and going into that first chorus, you play that D. So altogether, if we did the, if we're coming out of that first verse, let's say. Again, pretty straightforward it's just how you want to make it your own you know again I, I think you should give it some balance if you're just doing it on acoustic guitar um, so again the verse is going to be your B you're going to move it to the F sharp back to that B pretty little thing let me not right okay so D E A D B and it goes back into the verse and the pattern continues however from that point forward, going in, if again, if you're playing with the album, going from the verse to the chorus, you are not playing that walk walk up, I should say, you know, up to the D, to the E. It's only going to be. So it's pretty straightforward. So, I mean, those are all the chords you need. You can make this your own. So, I mean, that, that, you know, those are the bones of the song, basically. So however you want to do it, I, I gave you a couple of ideas. Um... Even, uh, you know, we just played this two weeks ago. First time I ever played it live. Um, and we kind of played it a little more of a, you know, I'm trying to think how I did it. It was something different. It wasn't the, uh, I wasn't doing that. And I kind of was doing this. I was doing something along those lines. Of, anyway, I, I, I kind of got creative, but again. And don't be afraid to kind of use the muting technique as far as you know muting the strings and and using you know just just the pick and the muted strings as like a percussive instrument as well so you're kind of doing it in between the chords and if and if that's kind of something you haven't done before the easiest way to learn that i think just sit down with the guitar just cover the strings enough for you muting them not not that just enough for you muting them and just just kind of strum away for that so I, I think you've got the whole song right there I mean at least for an acoustic stripped down version solo guitar you know maybe one other person who's you know play guitar one other person will play lead but if you can play those chords you can definitely add this to, uh, you know, your your catalog if, you, if you're building a set list for like a, an acoustic duo trio sort of thing or just solo acoustic. Um, 
I think it's really fun. Um, you know, so hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully um, it made sense. Uh, I, I know sometimes I kind of just assume people know how to play a chord or, 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 or you know, again, just, just you know, percussive patterns. Email me, respond to this. Um, you know, I, I can certainly help you out further, but I think it's pretty straightforward as far as knowing your chords to B, B bar, F sharp, D, E, A, and that's really it. Those are your, your, your chords. So um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, it was good. Good, good teaching this one. I think it's a, it's a cool song. I think it's a good song. I think it lends itself well to the acoustic guitar. So uh, enjoy, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Okay, this is Six String Fun. Uh, maybe you recognize the tune, maybe not, but we're going to go over it today. Runaway Train by Soul Asylum. And I've probably said this about all the 90s stuff that I do, and I'll probably continue to say this about the 90s tunes. The 90s had some fantastic music. Um, everything from, you know, the, the metal to the alternative, you know, possibly one of the best decades of music, in my opinion. I mean, I can argue other ones, but uh, there's some amazing music out of there. So we're going to check out this tune, um, Runaway Train, as I mentioned, by Soul Asylum. Pretty, we're we're going to just drum it. Uh, I could probably throw in uh, that intro a little bit um, that I didn't do, but, you know... Right, just, just to kind of give you a little something to start there, but you could always start right on the C. All right, there we go. So let's um, let's take a close look at this. If you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Uh, a lot of great things happening, so please come along for the ride. I think we're going to have a good time here. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to pop up, or I'll have on the, the screen, some of those, those cards, some of those um, links to some other 90s tunes, I think, that would fit right with this. So check it out. If you don't want to hear this tune, Fast forward to the end, whatever you want to do, it's all good. But let's take a closer look at this one, Soul Asylum, Runaway Train. All right, so let, let's uh, let's dive right into this one. As we had mentioned, uh, Soul Asylum, Runaway Train. Um, great tunes, pretty simple for the most part. Um, some standard chords, you got the F chord in here if you want to play a bard, if you want to play a shortcut, up to you. Up to you. But let's kind of get into this. The, 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 it starts on a C, basically, right? And I kind of just do this one little rip. I'm doing there is it just kind of fifth fret I'm on the second string and the fourth string I'm gonna move it up to the third fret and then I go to the first and second fret which is kind of like an A minor but we're just taking off the uh, your ring finger so and all I'm doing you're hitting those two strings you're being the D but if you don't want to do that just start on the C the, the, the whole song um, Kind of starts on the C, the verse. So if you want to kind of just go around the verse one time and then come in with the vocals, you can do that too. But So the verse is going to start off on the C. And I guess you can kind of play an E minor, full E minor. What I do is I'll play the C. And I walk the bass line up to the B note, but I kind of keep my finger on that C note here. Whatever works for you. So E minor. Or you can do the C. And then just walk that bass note up. Okay, to an A minor, to the G. So it'll sound like this. Right, A minor. And actually, as I'm playing this, it kind of, I don't know if I'm doing this on purpose or force of habit. It actually sounds like Waiting on a Sunny Day by Springsteen. Right, but it's... Listen to the tune, get the get the uh, the feel for the music. It's just you know, but the strumming pattern for the most part, I'm doing this. Right, so we got the verse. C, that E minor with the B, I guess. A minor, I did a G. And then what I'll do, depending how I feel, I'll, you could play a full G, be done with it. I will sometimes fret it this way, middle finger. In a uh, ring finger on the third fret for both E strings, and then I will bring my pinky so it'll sound like that. So, all together, it's an E minor, A minor, and I go to the G. It's up to you if you want to just keep it like that. Your call, okay. I'm um, just trying to give you a little something extra to play if you had an interest. 
Okay, uh, we're gonna play that two times. So we're gonna go through the C, the E minor, A minor, and the G twice. And what happens next? Well, I'm gonna share it with you. So the pre-chorus, we're gonna go to an F, to the G, to the C, to the A minor. You can kind of hear how this is evolving now to the part of the tune you probably know. Okay, back to the F, to the E minor. And you're gonna hold that for. So if we put it all together, G, C, A minor. Back to the F, E minor. And again, that funky G I'm doing. Adding that A note right there on the on that uh, high E string, up to you. But that's your pre-chorus right there. Okay, the chorus, same as the verse. That's how I do it for, for this tune. So keeping it simple, again, just trying to keep it real simple. So the chorus, same as the, the verse, basically. Uh, the only difference right now is that pre-chorus where you've got some more chords incorporated in there, right? So um, we're going to go through the verse again. Not that we're going to do it, but that's what comes next. You're going to do your verse. You're going to do your pre-chorus, the chorus again. And then you're going to kind of get that instrumental. I, I'm, it's, not an, it's an instrumental. It's a bridge. It's just it's musical, right? It's kind of musical. So... Um, so it's gonna go back to the, the chorus, but then we're gonna have some other things happening here, right? So it's gonna be. Right? So that's where it changes up. We're going back to the F. So it's kind of like the, I guess the the pre-chorus again. Um, what I would do sometimes just to kind of give it some dynamics when it gets to that po that point, I would actually instead of playing just the chords we've done already, I might just try to mix it up with some um, different voicings. You know, kind of you know your cage. Me kind of hey, look if this is the F chord in the E shape, I might try to bring uh, the F chord here. So if you, and you might be able to hear it. So it's the F. So again. I'm jumping around here, but the, the, the instrumental part is going to be, again, the first four chords are going to be what you did in the, the chorus and the verse. But then we're going to go back to that pre-chorus, you know, in a way, but we're going to kind of just play some different chords if it works. F, G, F, G. So again, F to the G. And this is where I kind of messed up a little bit. Um, back to the C. To the A minor. Back to the F. Which was an E minor here. To the G. So again, make it your own if you want to. Kind of, again, I don't make this too confusing. I mean, you do with what you want. The whole point is to kind of just keep it as simple as possible. Strumming. And I think I'm diving too deep. For, for some of us right now, so I'll, let me, let's me let just back it up. Um, it's going to be C, E minor, A minor, to the G, back to that F, to the G, to the C, to the A minor, to the F, to the E minor, to the G. There it is, and it comes back out to, um, um, I guess it's the chorus, but it's more dynamic. Everything kind of drops out um, where it would be. So listen to the tune, you'll hear that. But really what we have here is, is, is basically the, the, the song itself. I mean, you can make it as um, layered as you want, I guess, you know, different layers. Again, uh, I'm just kind of playing the basic chords. But if you want, you can kind of do some different chords. You got the F, the G, an E minor. Uh, if you want to play.
play the C up here, you could do it. I don't know if I would do that, but play it here. Um, different ways of doing it. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, um, I got some things happening here with some different links going on. So check it out. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Um, you know, getting it done with six-string fun, right? So let's do this. I'll see you on the next one. good to see you thank you for stopping by much appreciate i am richie this is six string fun um gonna go back a ways originally a tune from the 80s uh and then kind of rearranged in the 90s and i think it's kind of taken on some different variations over time here uh living on a prayer bon jovi uh slippery when wet album slippery when wet album and then um i believe it was a crossroad crossroad album um 94 and 95 because actually it was called prayer 94 so i'm assuming it came out in 94 um, where they did a bit of a stripped down version of it but even this version still isn't quite like that um, just came across a, a video on youtube with richie sambora um tommy Emanuel, and i think it was lawrence juber from uh you know paul mccartney and wings um where richie's singing it and they're kind of a you know accompanying him and it just sounds fantastic and i'll show you it, it's really i mean again this this tune is going to be just a handful of chords, a G, C, and a D. However, it's all going to revolve around your, your tonal center, which is the E minor. Okay, and we're going to play that E minor a couple different ways. If you can't do bar chords, it's fine. We're going to do it here. But it's just a great example of how you can take a, a song that was so big, an arena hit, you know, from the 80s, and you strip it down to its core, and it still sounds great and just as powerful. So let's get into that. I'm going to, if you haven't done so previously, or if you're brand new, you know, like the, the video, like the channel, all that good stuff. Uh, I just love getting the, the music out there to uh, everyone who has an interest in it. So uh, here we go. Let's get started with this one. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look at this one again. I think this is the exact same key as, you know, on the Slippery When Anna. What, Jesus, I'll get it one of these. A Slippery When Wet album. Um, we're just slowing it down. We're stripping it down. And really, here are the chords. It's all centered around that E minor, which we had talked about. You got a C. Or you can play it this way, and I'll show you the differences. D. Okay, there's the G. But that's really it. The variation's gonna be this E minor here, okay? Um, it's like an E minor seven. Now, just to kind of get this one out of the way, if you could only do the E minor here, that's great. You don't have to worry about that. This is just kind of giving it some extra flavor. And if you look at that video I kind of mentioned to you with Richie Sambor and Tommy Emanuel doing this, it's probably about 2010, 2011, if I had to guess. Um, it's really kind of based around this chord, but it's just kind of having some, some more flavor to it. So how am I getting that sound? Num number one, I'm hitting the open E. I'm barring it right here like I would for an E minor. But I'm hammering on to the 8th fret of the B string and to the ninth fret of the D string. Pinky's doing absolutely nothing. And you can get all the strings, you can get some of them, depends on what your mood is. Right? So, I leave that up to you. But listen to that pattern. It's really, you're hitting this open E, almost like a droning note. If that doesn't work. Tommy used to work on the dots. Stay on that E minor. We're gonna go to a C. It's tough. So tough. 
So what are we doing? That E minor, again, key to a C, to a D, back to that E minor. All right? That's going to be it for now. We're going to go into the pre-chorus. We got to hold on to what, so we, and I'll play it for you and we'll go over it. We got to hold on. I was trying to mix it up there. Probably not the best way to do it there, but here's C. Three times. So we're going, starting on the C, to a D, to an E minor. We're gonna do it three times. Second time. Third time, a little different. Back to the C. So you're, you're, you're taking out that E minor, which would have been a fourth time, basically. Okay, that's your pre-chorus. Um, your chorus is going to be um, some similar patterns. You're just kind of kicking around the, uh, the, the first chord you're playing. So it's going to be E minor, C, hold the D for two measures. So here's what we're doing. Basically, you're looking at four chords in each of these sections here. The first one's going to be E minor. C to a D, hold that D. All we're doing now is we're changing the first chord. Instead of an E minor, a G. Back to a C, to the D, to the D, back to the E minor, to the C, to the D, to the D. Hold the C for two. D for two. Back to E minor. That's your, your, those are your chords. That's the song. I mean, you make it your own, but that's basically how this goes. Uh, the other thing I would suggest, I mean, again, it's E minor pentatonic or just uh, E minor. Um, but it's, if, if you see these videos, it's kind of... Um, <laughs> scales or, or just targeting those root notes that's it so hopefully this one helps you out enjoy uh living on the prayer living on, living on a prayer bon jovi um enjoy see you in the next one again if you haven't done so just like the video let everyone know that you enjoyed it let them let them get a chance to see it too all right i'll see you on the next one later